Hey, welcome to the Harry Man Show number 38. Today we have a great guest, Melanie Joe. She has played with very artists such as Billy Gibbons, Slash, and Nancy Williams, and others will discuss. How are you doing, Melanie? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Uh, she's coming from the East Coast. How are you doing over there on that side? Um, It's been a very interesting uh, a year, to say the least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely dig into that a little bit and how it's affected us. But, uh, yeah, I know yeah. Um, one thing I want to say is uh, one, the, the way I discovered Melanie is actually just seeing your uh, videos pop up in my Instagram feed and kind of being blown away by your chops. You know, oh, seeing you. the feedback and, you know, um, yeah, it, I saw a lot of rock and roll influence in there. And, you know, you're kind of always... Mm-hmm playing you're always keeping busy and i kind of you know i respect that quite a bit yeah um especially because of like the, the whole covid situation i just been like practicing and, and and stuff and it's been weird not being able to play live yeah that's definitely a different muscle you got to stretch out you know instead of you know sitting home shredding all the time yeah it's uh yeah i i mean it's because I, I was used to playing out like you know shows like six days a week and then all of a sudden no one's no one's able to do that. <laughs> so when you were playing six days a week, was that mainly in LA? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would play at a lot of the bar, like, you know, like the Viper room, the whiskey. I had like a, a thing at how Moon I was doing and I'd play all around, um, all those places in, in LA. And plus then I would, um, do, do the touring and stuff when I wasn't doing that That's around, uh, uh, 14. Oh, nice. Yeah. 14. I believe. Yeah. Something like that. And then was it influenced by parents or other uh, family members or just started in school? Um, I, I always just enjoyed a uh, uh, music and I, I, I started playing piano when I was really young and then I kind of switched the guitar. And then when I was in, um, school, uh, I, I joined, um, the band, but I wanted to play percussion. I didn't really, you know, um, all, all the better looking boys were playing percussion. So I, I <laughs> wanted to play percussion. So, and then I just switched to, switched to drums when I was able to do jazz band and stuff. So that's how that kind of, kind of happened. Now, what, did you go to the traditional uh, spot, style of it starting with a snare drum or you just kind of got the opportunity to jump right onto a kit? Well, it kind of turned, turned out both. Um, so the band director discovered that I, I, I was really quick to it. So I, I first was like starting in percussion, but then, um, I just naturally, it kind of like came to me and I could read music very easily. So then he's like, we need a drummer for the jazz band that can read. Yeah, it's pretty rare. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, so then that's how that came about. And so then within less than two, I think, cause I, I first started playing clarinet in, 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 in the, um, in the band, mm-hmm. in the school band. And then I was like, no, this is, no, this is, this is lame. Um, no, fa- no offense to like clarinet players, but I was like, no. Yeah, it's not totally <laughs> I, I, rock and roll like, at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, I want to, I, I, that's not my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could read, I could read music really well. Mm-hmm. So, um, plus I played piano so I could read. So within like a month, I was, they had pushed me over on drum set mm-hmm. in, in like the jazz band. So I was playing in, in the classical band and then the jazz band and then, from there, I just started practicing more, and I was doing all the little, like, solo ensemble stuff and all state stuff, which I, I think is all over each, each state in the U.S. I think, but mm-hmm. I was I was getting into kind of like, like doing that stuff. Now, uh, um, being able to read uh, note notation like on piano, did that help you in uh, today's day with like you know, pick it up in band stuff like that? Does help you register keys and help you with the songwriting now? Yeah, I I mean I. I do do some song songwriting um, with uh, this uh, duo I, or group I'm I'm just putting together here in, while I was in Florida. So we were doing that, but as um, as far as that training that I had, um, to be honest, for most of the gigs that I have gotten and stuff, I I don't have never used the, um, that particular thing. Mm-hmm. So um, no one's you don't get charts thrown in front of you so for a lot of rock and roll gigs. What I'm asking. Oh, sorry, say it again. It uh, kind of so you don't get you don't get asked to read charts quite often in rock and roll gigs that you're getting. Oh no, no, never. I've <laughs> honestly, I, I've never had to read a chart since I was back in school. Oh, nice. So that's <laughs> that's pretty uh, on the easy side there too. Um, yeah, yeah, I've never. Yeah. <laughs> so backing up a little bit, as far as rock drummers, which was, which ones were the ones that jumped up at you right away? 
Um, I love, I, you know, I love John Bonham, obviously. Yeah, I can um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, love John I, mean, I mean, as a, a whole heart, uh, confident, I can, I can hear it in your snare rolls and your, your, your kick and stuff like that that you do. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I love John Bonham. Um, also, I, you know, I love the band Incubus. Oh. So I would obviously go for, you know, Jose, because that's just what I listened to when I was a kid. And mm-hmm. then um, Matt Cameron, I love Soundgarden. So. Oh, oh nice. What would be your uh, your go to uh, Incubus record as far as drumming wise? Oh, probably. Um, I re- it it, it depends. It almost depends on my mood. Like I can go from like science to a crow left. Like a crow left the murder is actually uh, one of my favorite uh, albums from them. Yeah, especially like the song Six Sad Little World." I, I, I was, like. Jose, I was just about to say that. There's a hi hat pattern there in the interlude that's amazing. It's yeah, not, it's not really difficult, but it's just perfect what he did right there. Yeah, it's like it's it's very almost like um, Stuart Copeland a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's got kind of a a, a pop. I don't know how to explain it, 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 but it's perfect. Though. It kind of leads the guitar solo through that whole part. Yeah, it's it's very kind of airy, kind of you, you get a little like influence of like the Police in there, some Stuart Copeland. It's very it's very that's it's very it's very incubus. That's they they kind of went with this like airy vibe after yeah um, after after uh, Morning Dew. Or no, they started kind of doing that with Morning View, and then when Six Out Little World came out, then or once um, A Crow Left and Murder came out, it, they got like very kind of almost like airy type of rock. Yeah. Very ethereal. And that's when Ben Kenny kind of came into the band, too, and he kind of made a big change yep. as well. Yep, because he has that, the roots and those kind of like funk pop kind of things. Nice. And then um, you currently mm-hmm. did covers. Were you playing in cover bands growing up, or were you just jumping in original rock bands right away? Um, well, when I, I, I was actually playing in like in bars when I was like 16. Oh, nice. <laughs> so like, um, like the area of, of Florida I was, I went to school in, it's like, um, there wasn't like a lot of like great musician, like, okay. I, like there was like, you need like, it ended up turning into where they wanted like musicians to play in the bars but the problem was there wasn't a lot because just the area I grew up in it was like kind of more of a smaller town at the time so mm-hmm. when I, so p- they would look past my age <laughs> oh yeah and be like well that's that's fine we need we needed good drummers mm-hmm. so when i was 16 i was playing in, in bars well that was a good learning curve too as well i imagine yeah so i i was doing that and then when i went to to college i i, I start i was doing the same thing um but that that was in i was um, in uh, Jacksonville for a bit. So that's the next uh, next thing I was asking. You studied at MI for a little bit there too, as well. Yeah, yeah. I, so I studied at I. Well, I took. Um, I was at MI for a little bit. I took mo- mostly. I was there. Like I took like a music business class and stuff like that because I already had the degree from a, another mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. So um, it was it was kind of like I, I I I wanted to get um a different perspective because I went to a primarily a jazz situation oh, nice. and an MI is more of an all around like pop music and rock music and that kind of thing. Yeah. Where, I, I, I had a little experience taking lessons there. Was there any instructors that stood out to you there as far as drumming? Oh, um, oh, I know his name. <laughs> I know Ray um, is there quite often. Yeah. I, I had, um, Oh, I know his name. <laughs> I understand how that goes. Damn it! Okay, <laughs> I, I have, it, I have it. I'm going through my contacts. I'm gonna get it. Well, who do you play for? It. I can probably tell you. Um, I'm gonna pronounce it so wrong. Abel, a no, Abel. Am I saying that wrong? Are you, are you talking about the guy from Paul McCartney, Abe Loyal? No, no, no. Um, dude, I feel so, I, I'm, I'm so bad with names. Yeah, I, I feel you there. I'm so bad with names. It's I'm so able. That's not how you pronounce that. I think I wrote it wrong in my in my phone. <laughs> it's all it's all good. I was just it was just a side question there because I know they yeah. have I know they have legends such as uh, Joe and um, Picaro there as well. I didn't know if you'd study there while he was around. No, who, who I actually studied with, well, like mainly for drums was Danny Gopley, and that was at that was at UNF. Oh, nice. So after yeah, so. Was studying there? Did you go? Did it lead right into some of the bigger gigs, or did you kind of stay in the area there for a little bit? When when I was at UNF, um, well, 
Well, Jacksonville is, uh, when I was in Jacksonville, I was doing like, like gigs around town, like the beach and stuff. But the bigger stuff, when I moved to LA, um, that's when I started doing more things. And now was that, was that just uh, being on the scene and getting noticed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the weird thing, well, yeah, that and just like making friends and like how the Billy, Billy Gibbons thing came, came about was Billy was looking for drummers on YouTube. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he just happened to find find me. Um, nice. Yeah, so B- Billy found me from YouTube, and then um, so that's how that happened. So going into that gig, did you have to learn a lot of his ZZ Top catalog, or was it just mainly his solo stuff? No, the, really, the only ZZ Top songs that we played were Ten Foot Pole and and The Grange. Yeah, I imagine those two. Yeah. So was that a fun gig? Was you playing? Having you play with a, cl- a click, or was it more of an old school rock and roll feel? Well, it, it kind of depend, depend, depended on the song, but some, some of them we had clicks and then some of them we didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, so like, I imagine he probably has a light yeah. show behind him too as well. Oh, yeah, he, he, lo- like, he loves um, all that kind of stuff. And we had like lasers like on the drums and we, we, he actually wanted like a, a, a car on stage, but <laughs> <laughs> we ended up getting like this, like this cool, like, um, cool looking bike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, big endorses the Harley and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah. yeah. So, so are, do you have any plans in the future to go out with them again? Or is that is it on hold as well right now? That's on hold as well. I mean, um, I know that he was talking about doing, doing something with a, a getting another solo album thing out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but with COVID, I, everything's kind of like up in the air. Yeah. I totally agree. That's why it's hard to ask that question because everyone's saying, yeah, spring 21. And some people are saying January 22nd or 2022. And I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. It's like every, like, like I'm, I know I, like, I don't know how people are still about the vaccine, but I'm like, I want the vaccine just so I can play. Oh yeah. yeah there's, <laughs> I'm like, there's definitely gonna be pulling both directions on that. But you know, I think most musicians want to go out and have it the way it was, you know, you know, just, you know, with no guidelines. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like, the main goal, I think, everyone would rather wait and sharpen their blades until the time being. Yeah, because like I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm I because I think I'm one of the very well because I'm getting I'm getting like a different perspective because Los Angeles is locked down, but since I decided to stay in Florida because I felt like it would be a little bit safer mm-hmm. because LA is so big compared to where it's here, but and then but then the problem is in Florida, like no one really cares and like everything looks like nothing is wrong, but it's like. So I'm just kind of like stuck in the house, kind of like I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's uh, very strange. I've it, never, I've never been in this situation. It's very weird. Yeah, I think it's new to everybody. You know, I hate saying that word the new normal, but it's uh, it's changing. It made everyone kind of, kind of crazy because, like, I was asked to play a New Year's Eve gig, and I was like, oh, I want to play, but I don't want to get the virus, but I want to play and I want to make money, but I don't want to get sick. So yeah, everyone's it's got, a very everyone's got to look out for themselves and others around at the same time. So yeah, I, I totally get it. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like yeah, it's it's it, it's it's a weird it's a weird it's a weird time. Now I want to ask uh, on a, on a, um Billy Gibbons uh, uh, um gig, were you playing a big kid or a small kid for that one? Because I know Frank oh, Beard, um, Frank Beard kind of made his art, his drum sets more of like an art piece. Did uh, Billy Gibbons yeah. want you to play like the two bass drums and all that stuff? Well, he um, for for that gig, I mean, it was really um, basically you know what I particularly wanted, and I just went with you know a nice four piece four four piece kit. It's like almost well, no, actually, I take that back. It was a five piece kit because I had a sixteen and an eighteen inch four tom, oh, nice. so it's actually five five piece. I forgot I had that eighteen inch four tom, um, and then. Towards the end, I ended up getting a Timbali. Oh, really? Um, like I ended up, yeah, I, I got some like Timbali and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was, I, it was like a moderately sized kit, but um, like I can go either way. I, I like you, you seen the kits that I that I have in the video. It's a huge kit, mm-hmm. but then a lot of times I have a, I have a little, you know, little like three piece or four piece kit or like a little box kit. Yeah, and I've noticed you. So uh, I, I, well, talking about who you play with, but uh, was that at the round time you started playing DW drums, or did you play DW drums before that? Well, it's kind of okay. What happened with that was this was before I started playing with with Billy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, 
it, it, it's it, it's a long it's kind of a long story, but it it it's um it's kind of a sad thing where the owner of one drum company who I was friends with and I've been friends with for a long time mm-hmm. um, passed away. Oh wow, and that's Maypex. So right? it, yeah, yeah. So then I, I switched over to DW. Oh, gotcha. So it 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 was kind of it because um. I was, he was a dear person to me. Um, cause he, he, you know, he's always, you know, we, like this is even before, you know, Billy, this is what back when I was like, you know, in, in school, like he would always like, Oh, I love your plane. Let me know when you, you're ever out in Tennessee or Nashville. So mm-hmm. he was just, you know, and I think everyone, um, you know, love, love Joe Hicks or love, you know, or love Joe Hicks because he was like that with, you know, every one and every, and every drummer and stuff. Yeah. Some uh, friends that have said the same thing about him. Yeah. So, and, and, um, it, it was just, it was really, it was really sad because I talked to him a week before he had passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I, he, he was flying. Like I had to, I just played with Billy at, um, in, in Nashville at, at the, at the city winery. Mm-hmm. And, he was wanting to go to that show, but then he had to fly to Los Angeles to go to Nam, mm-hmm. and that's when that happened. He got like really, I think he was a flu or pneumonia or something, and then he was flying back to Nashville and like ended up like that happened at the airport, and um, yeah, so like I, I had spoken to him like a week before. And then I saw like it come up in my newsfeed on Facebook, and I was I was like shocked because I just talked to him. Yeah, it's, um, it's a total bummer to hear that too, as well. Yeah, so that's 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 kind of the situation. Um, he he came to me with a uh, Maytex like way before like like anything like so. Nice. Um, but then when he passed passed away, um, yeah, seemed like he had a pretty good eye for talent there. So he was onto something. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. He, he, he was definitely, he would, he would be on, like, I would post, uh, you know, a video or, or something and he'd be like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Please let me know when you're in Nashville. Um, yeah, you know, come, come see the Mapex kit. You know, he's always, always like that. And I, and at the time I was just, you know, some young, like 18 year old, not really, <laughs> you know, yeah. so so were you so he, were, were you playing Zildjian cymbals too that whole time or is that did you make a switch? Oh, no, over? Yeah, Zildjian I have um pretty much always always played. Oh nice! And um, I noticed you yeah. played some of the bigger crashes. Is that something you've always done as well? Oh yeah, oh, well yeah. I I like I like kind of tinkering around with like different sounds. Like um, like I love um their hy- hybrid series of cymbals. That's mm. that's most of what I have is their hybrid series. Nice. And then I have some stackers. I have, um, you know, I have like like some of the bells, and then I have have a gong. Oh, nice! No, that's not have, really too uh, common these days. Yeah, I I decided to get um um I forget how I forget, man how how many inches was it? It, it it I have to go back on 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 to see the sizing of it, but I got a huge gong. Oh, um, nice! He's probably about a sixty inch. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's true. Like I remember rolling it in in in, in the house, and <laughs> I I just I was just thinking like the neighbors could see through the fence, and they were, they were like, "What is that?" <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, it's you know it's like I said, it's not common to see those, and it's 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 good for a stage show though, definitely. Yeah, so I you know I was like I, I wanted a gong and the, the John Bonham thing, so I I, I got a gong. Well, you need tim- <laughs> now you need some timpanies. Yeah, I can actually play symphony. I I can play symphony, so yeah. Yeah, well, you having the notation now is definitely going to help with that. And but those are uh, you need a semi truck to get those around. Yep, and I, you know, the same thing with like because when, when I was in, in college, I kind of did like a double like classical and jazz thing. So I like was doing marimbas, symphonies, you know, all that. You know, I was actually uh, in, in like vibraphone. I I was doing like all that plus jazz drumming. Nice, nice. So it all mixed in uh, and together for really well for you. Correct. Yeah. So I was I was kind of doing 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 both. So you were mentioning you had a bigger DW kit now, and it's and that's in like the the purple natural burl is what you're playing right now, I believe. Oh, um. So so 
in the video is that big big kit that's a um um na- it's a natural it's a babinga kit oh really um yeah um yeah i i saw a this this goes back to i think i was uh at um was it at Na- now or i i saw a picture of this kit kit and it was a beautiful babinga kit with like gold hardware and i was like i'm gonna get that kit one day because <laughs> i i heard how it sounded and i and i was like i want that i want odw the bingy kit this is the this is when i was like like, like in high school i was like i want that the bingy kit <laughs> yeah but being so, uh, got more popular i say so in the last decade i know talma came out with a line of them and they kind of start blowing up but you know dw yeah. obviously is going to do it better than everybody else <laughs> but uh yeah yeah and I'm sorry. And plus, like, plus, like, so, like, the people, like, I look up to, like, because they, like, um, like, when I was talking to John Good, I was, like, you, like, I was, like, yeah, a lot of the reason why I love DW is, like, all my, all my favorite artists play DW. Have you got a chance to tour that factory at all? Yes, I, yeah. So, so, I toured the, 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 um, the DW factory and was talking to John and then, because they were making me, um, uh, 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 my my well, I have how many? Uh, geez, I have so many. <laughs> like that, like seven, and then I have the PDP kit here in Florida. But but I was making my own. I have a spruce maple kit, and it, it, well, it's quilted maple. It's spruce and quilted maple, and it's kind of like this pink fade to natural wood. It's really pretty. That's what I think. And that's the one I was I was looking at. It's in that promo photo. That's really nice drum set. Yeah, that, that's that's a spruce with spruce with quilted maple, and it's like a pink fade to like natural wood, and it has gold hardware. It's the quilted maple is beautiful. It looks like velvet. Like I'm, it's a beautiful, beautiful kit. Nice. And did, were you there when Terry Bazio had his drum set in the back room? Uh, I don't remember if that is it the blue one. No, he had his like full house kit set up back there, and Neil Pur's kit was set up there when I was going through there one time, and it was just it was just oh, crazy. No. Just, I was crazy to see it in person. Oh, dang. no, no, that um, no, that wasn't there when I was there, but that would that would have been awesome to see. <laughs> I went over and just touched the road cases and ran away. <laughs> 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 I know it's a dark thing to do, but I, like I was just like I felt achieved at that point just doing that. But that was just a side note. But yeah, that that DW room is uh, something to see in person, definitely. Yeah. I remember, like, John, because at the at the time, the spruce maple, like, this was before it it came came out, so it, they were just gonna debut that at Nam for that year. Mm-hmm. So he was having me try it, test out all all the kits, and I immediately put on the spruce maple, and I was like, I love this kit. And nice. He's like, okay, and then then I picked out the colors and stuff I wanted. So on your Bibbing kit, they're natural lower tones. Are you running a clear or a coated head on it? Oh, oh, clear. Oh, nice. And I imagine pinstripes are more of a hydraulic style. Um, usually, I yeah, yeah. Usually, I go with um. I actually, what, what heads do I have on those? Now? It's, it's Remo Emperor's. Uh, I believe. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I. I gosh, I, I've been in Florida for so long. I haven't seen that kit. Oh no, I hear you. The, the thing about being a shell is they they kind of make any head sound good. I mean, the drum does more work than the head when it comes to that. Correct, but the um that kit that kit beautiful. I you know I I don't think I've ever played on a better kit than that being a kit. Well, with that being said, are you looking forward to trying anything out from DW in the future? Anything new? Yeah. Well. Okay. Okay. So this is so this is kind of a funny thing. So before I left to Florida, before I knew what was going to even happen with this virus, Mm -hmm. um, I had ordered some stuff from DW that um is currently sitting in LA that I can't play because I'm stuck in Florida. Oh, uh, is it snare wise or just a, a drum set? Well, yeah, I, I have, um, I have, um, I believe an almond snare. Yeah. An almond snare that, um, I, I can't, it's, it's, it's in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, that I had just ordered. What, what did I just order for my birthday? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Cause I was, I was picking out, I always order a snare um, for myself for my birthday. Um, so, do you have any experience with their concrete snare at all? Yeah, yeah, I have a concrete snare. Oh, what do you think of it? I love it. Is it too loud or too overbearing, or it's perfect? 
I see. I, I don't think it's. I I feel like it has a nice pop to it. Um, I actually like that it's on the louder side. Um, mm. but no, I, I I love I love the concrete street snare, and it looks really really cool as well. Mm. Um, I used to use it. Um, when I would do like house house the moon. I used to I used to bring it in all the time. Oh, nice! It's got definitely has <laughs> some weight to it here. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I personally don't mind that, but it's 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 on the heavier side if if you're, you're carrying it. So, um, oh yeah, that's what I ordered. I ordered a purple heart snare. Oh, nice! And, so, and so, it has a little. I have, I have some yeah. friends that love that snare. That's a, that's a great piece. You're gonna like a lot. Yep, that's what I that's what I just ordered for my birthday. Nice, uh, <laughs> nice. And um, are you a snare collector yourself or more of a kit collector? But, um, kind of both. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I do the same myself. But uh, um, I think. Yeah, I think I almost own every DW snare that they make. Really? I got quite a yeah, few I myself, believe... but I can't say that. Because <laughs> <laughs> every every year, I, I well, when I you know when I first got endorsed by DW, I, I was like, okay, well, let's buy a bunch of snares because I like snares. And then every year after that, I was like, well, it's my birthday, I'll get another snare, nice. and I'll get another snare. Yeah. So <laughs> very addicting. It kind of became. It kind of became. Um, I'm just gonna keep adding more to the collection um i also got i also got a tasmanian snare that's really great oh yeah i heard good things about those as well well i wanted to back up a little <laughs> bit when you were playing with uh, uh gibbons uh what, what were you guys touring was it uh, international mostly national we we went to um cuba oh nice so um what we heard all around the u.s and then we flew to cuba and then we did a documentary in cuba which is airing on access tv so if any um it it, it it airs all, all all the time, so if you if you watch that, which it, it's a great I, it's a great channel if if you have it because they have so many music stuff and things. That it, that's probably one of my favorite channels to watch because everything else is kind of like I, I <laughs> not my thing. So what's the, name of, being, what's the name of that documentary? So I can look it up. Um, Billy Gibbons Cuba. Okay, I'll check that out definitely. Yeah. Um, but we did like a we were there for like a week and a half and we tour all around you know like the havana area we played at the havana jazz festival we played at some other like at sh- shows there v- venues there um and then we filmed the documentary while we were there well obviously it was different times but were there crowds like they were in america there as well oh it was big crowds like this one venue it was like it was so packed no one could move <laughs> Yeah, those are and then up. and then it and then it's funny because there was no AC either because it's like going traveling back to the fifties like nothing it's it's like nothing has changed because yeah I um, well the thing about events like that they don't get as much as America does we're kind of a little bit more you know immune to it as to them they stay up and go to it and you know bigger numbers correct and they love music like it, it like like being okay I get I guess this is kind of being like like an, an American, like I, if I was in a pack show like that with no AC, I'd probably, I would be like, no, I, I can't, I can't take this. But with them, it was like, they were all in, they were having a great time. Mm-hmm. It was sweat. And you could see it from the video. You could see like the steam, how sweaty it was in there. Really? <laughs> it was, it was humid. I mean, I'm from Florida, so I know humid and it was humid in there. Nice. Um, and uh, did, were you playing? I know you're playing with some other various artists too. Was it before or after that you had the chance to play with Nancy Wilson, uh, Nancy Wilson, and Slash? So okay, how that came about was um, the musical the MD, the musical director, had asked me to do this thing with Nancy Wilson and Slash, and it was both of them, and then with other various artists, and um, and it was this, um, this this event for the LA Zoo. Oh, nice. So and I, Robert Rand, Robert Randolph was on it too, um, and Rachel Reinhart was on it. Nice. And Benton Blunt was on it. And now uh, was that as well? A, was that a you know kind of anxiety experience, or you just kind of get, went into it, kind of know most of the songs off the top of your head? Well, um, it wasn't an anxiety experience. Um, or like I, I thought it's like like I was like, I was like, this is awesome. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing Barracuda with Nancy Wilson and Slash right now. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So, I, I was like, and those are the like kind of songs that like, you start playing, you don't realize you actually know them all the way through, kind of thing. 
Uh, well, I, Bar- Barracuda, I, I, I did. Uh-huh. Um, and then what, what, we, what other songs? We played some of Robert Randolph songs. Um, then we did Led Zeppelin. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we did Led Zeppelin, and what else did we? We and we did a bunch of like blues stuff, stuff that everyone everyone would know. And we did a bunch of heart heart songs um, as well, like you know Barracuda, um, straight straight on you, mm-hmm. straight on you, um, and and crazy on you. I believe we also did. Yeah, yeah, it's a crowd favorites pretty much. Yeah, so we did we did like a bunch of uh, cool songs and stuff. So not to jump gears on you again, but is there any drummers that you you watch on YouTube or you look up to currently at the moment? I love Eric Moore. Oh, nice! He's awesome as well. Yeah, er- Eric Moore. I've even I like even though I I play like mostly like rock stuff and I like blues and and that kind of thing. I really love gospel drummers. Eric Moore, Tony Royster, um, Thomas Pridgen, all all those guys. Um, I really enjoy their playing. Now there's this one Italian Italian drummer that I see all the time. He comes up to my feet, like I follow him. Oh, I can't pronounce his name. Is he a younger kid? He, he's he's not. He he's probably like like twenty something. He's probably oh, yeah. my era, around it's around not, my. It's not who I thought. I just I'm drawing a blank too. There, you ever watch the Zildjian uh, day shows? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, they had a kid on it. I keep forgetting his name, but it was like, it blew me away. Like, um, a young kid, he has a really unique style. Uh, it will come to me later when we're off the show, but yeah, I, I love watching that is show. He is, is he from Italy? I believe so. Is, is, is he a kid kid, or he's, he like looks like around 20, 21, uh, 22? Kid, kid kid. He's probably like 10 or 12 years old. Okay, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the um, because this is got I, man, I I can't. I'm looking to see if I can find his name, but um, I got the same problem. He, I, forget, I forget names, remember faces really well. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, and he's from Italian, so he, he, I I I don't want to I don't want to pronounce it and pronounce it wrong, but I I'm always watching his videos because they're really really good. Nice. Now, with that being said, I know you're a chart reader. Is there any books that you kind of go back to your at all? Or read at all? Um. Okay. Here's here's how I am with books. So, books that I enjoyed are the Gary Chester New Breed. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, because I because pocket and groove are like the most important thing. Which this okay? This, this kind of I kind of get kind of annoyed. So I'll post like a video <laughs> of me doing like a, a, like a drum solo, and like it's like not supposed to be like I'm playing. You know, it's a drum solo. It's supposed to be entertainment. It's supposed to be right. And then someone will always post. But can you groove? I'm just like. Uh, there's always that guy in the room. Really? I'm, I'm just kind of like, can, can, you, can you enjoy? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, obviously, if you're playing that stuff, it, you probably work on groove. Yeah, I imagine it comes before that. So, like, I would constantly get, can you groove? I'm like, come on. But no, like, so the Gary Chester book, <laughs> and that's where, that's where I think it's funny, because, like, I worked through that Gary Chester book, like, a lot. Yeah. Um. So that it, it kind of makes me laugh when I, when I when I hear that comment. Yeah. Um. So I like the Gary Chester New Breed book, the one and two. Um. What else? Um. Sick Control. I've done a little bit with. Um. And as far as that, I honestly really don't like books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a it brings back some like you know harsh childhood memories of struggle. Yeah, like I, I've done like the the funk uh, that yellow funk book. I, for, I I'm not sure. I forget what it's called, but like I've it has like some Steve Gad mm. in there. It has some Vinny Calu. I I think it does. Don't don't quote me on that. Of um, stuff in there, but a lot of the times, like I just watch other drummers. Like I'll watch like Eric Moore or something, or I'll, I'll try to like listen and watch more so than. Um, go from a book well yeah i mean youtube is actually a big tool now but the thing about eric moore i see him gradually getting better over time you know what i mean like he just mm-hmm. seems like he's getting faster and more powerful the, the older he gets yeah yeah for, for, for sure and like yeah for sure on on, on that um so but no i i i just watch drummers in, in kind of that way so are you currently giving lessons right now yeah, yeah. Um, I do virtual lessons. Nice. And what would be the best way to reach to you on for getting that started? Oh, um, probably my my Instagram at 
Melanie Joe Drums. I, I go by that on everything, but um, M E L A N I E Joe Drums. And then <laughs> your, your YouTube's under the same as well, as, right? Yep. Yep. You can find me anywhere by by that. Yeah, I would highly recommend checking out our channel. There, you got quite a few videos on there. You know, there's a lot of good stuff mm-hmm. on there. Yep. So uh, before I let you go, I mean, w- w- what do you see happening in the near future? I know due to the obvious and stuff like that. When you, what time frame do you see, and do you have any uh, hopes of certain gigs you're getting back together with? Well, I was contacted by two two things. Um, problem is, both of them said basically. Basically, it's 2021 or 2022. Yeah, definitely. That's a while. That's a ways out there. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like with the COVID thing intending was was basically for both of them. Um, but they were asking if I was interested, and I'm like, yes. Um, and then I have something that I have with someone here that I'm working on. Nice. And um, I don't I don't want to disclose any of that here, obviously, but uh. Um, do you, do you find like having this recent situation, do you have more time to practice or are you just doing it the same amount? Um, well, I definitely have more time to practice cause there's literally nothing to do. No, I, I mean, I said that wrong. Do you find yourself practicing more in times like these? Yeah. Uh, for, for, for a little bit, like I, I got like, like I was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm literally stuck in the house all day. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, this is, because I'm not a person that watches TV, and I'm usually out playing, and so I'm just like, what do I do? <laughs> so I, I found myself practicing, and then I would take nightly drives. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's it's really it's yeah. easy to get stuck in that YouTube rabbit hole and just kind of go back and forth with the, you know, YouTube and practicing. I do that quite often myself. Yeah, and then what stinks is, like, a lot of, like, like, you know how you see drummers who they mainly post videos and it's just them. They don't play with anyone. Mm-hmm. Well, I was kind of the opposite where a lot of the videos I posted were, were from gigs. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, now... Technology is definitely getting better in the, the way we're doing a collaboration, doing, you know, cover videos and stuff like that. And I see a lot more of that popping yeah. up. And then now it's like I've gone back to, like, being, like, 18 again. And, like, now I'm at my house alone and... Uh, <laughs> I can't play with anyone because of COVID and yeah, yeah, I hear you. I know, I know that was kind of a silly question, but you know, I, I, I try to see light, you know, and the, and the bad things too as well. You know, yeah. your chops are definitely going to get mean, better. I, I have, I've actually done some, um, zoom jams with people in Nashville and, um, and Los Angeles, even though I'm not there, like, um, but it's still not. And like, I know a lot of people were doing like zoom, um, streams and stuff, but it's still not the same as like playing in person with people. Oh, absolutely not. Not at all. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure people, they, they are sick of not being in, in concert and things. Well, unless you come down to Florida and, and like, yeah. it's completely. Well, I, I, I think good things are coming your way in the next year or two, regardless, so, you know, how long this wait yeah. is. But uh, yeah, Melanie, I I want to thank you for being on the show and, and being one of the first guests we have on here, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And once again, to reach out is for lessons, your Instagram is your handle at Melanie Joe, correct? Yep. Yeah. And I would highly recommend anyone go subscribe to your YouTube channel. It's great content on there. There's a lot of good drumming to check out. So Melanie, thank you, and uh, if you enjoy the show, share it with your friends and have a good night.